or what it is, is I had three prepared. And kind of like last year, um, I wanted to wait and see what the, the, the spirit of the room was before I decided which one to do. So um, I actually, I, I have two. So I'm just going to prepare you for two. Since we have tons of time, because um, <laughs> the first one might take a little time, uh, and then the first one is one I deeply care about. So my first, my favorite, um, that's the, you know, Twitter has lists, and Lisa's so generous, she puts every single person who's attending TMC in her list on Twitter under the Team Etsy account. So I just went in and screenshotted the entire list of 200 people. So I'm just going to stand here and read off every name because you mean that much to me. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? No, I know you're not. <laughs> but no, I, I don't have all 200 up here. Um, no, that's just the first three screens. It went on for like seven more. Um, but my favorite is the room, is everyone in the room. And I just wanted to acknowledge and, and thank you all for that. All right, so we'll start over. Here's my second, my favorite. And this one is developed, it's a story in two parts. Because um, my career in education has had two parts. And the first part is my first nine years of teaching, and now my last two years of teaching teachers. Um, so I want to title it Words Matter. And it took me many years to realize this in, in my teaching. <clears throat> and, I, and it took me a while to realize how much they matter. So when I started teaching, I decided that very first year that I didn't like the word students. It's a very passive word, students. Right? It's collective. It's, it's the group of individuals in my room, and you are students, and I am the teacher, and it implies power and it implies control, and I hated that because that wasn't the environment I wanted. So I purposefully chose to use the word learner instead. Do you know how hard that is to email your principal? The learners in my classroom would like to do, and that's hard because the language of school is about students and teachers. But I did, and I was really consistent. That first year was hard, but every single time, Anything occurred, I wrote the word learner. In my class, I, uh, someone asked me a question. I said, well, as learners, we need to do law. And I would use it as, and students would occasionally say, you know, during the first couple months of school, what else? You always call us learners, why is that? And my response was always a nice, simple, short, because students study and learners learn, and I don't give a rat's ass how much you study. I care how much you learn. And I would say that in class, exactly like that, right? Passionate, and I would swear, and they'd be like, ooh, it is high school players. <laughs> right? And they hear worse in the hallway. It wasn't the F-bomb. So, learners versus students. And I kept doing it, and I kept doing it, and I kept doing it. I never preached, I never said anything to anyone like, you should do this. I just, I just did it. And it didn't realize, it didn't hit me how much impact that had on the people around me until the second year in my school, my principal was standing up at the, begin at the beginning of the year in front of everyone, welcoming everyone, and she said, so the students in, the learners in our building, <laughs> and, and I, just, I, I just melted because my principal had changed her language. And once the principal changes her language, then I, I was department chair, and the counselors are using the language, and all of the admin is using the language, and then my principal looked at me and said, no, that's you, Gwen, thank you. You've really changed the culture of the school by that one little word. Because learners have cheerleaders, coaches, learners have um, people pushing them and pulling them, but students just sit there in chairs. So changing the words matter, the words that we use with, about the people around us. So that's part one. Part two, now I'm at the university, and my pre-service teachers are going into classrooms, and I hashtag one day, a team, they're always in teams of two at first, and I hashtag how many times these young adults are saying the word guys. 
I had 52 times in one hour where this team had said the word guys. So guys, please get out a piece of paper. Guys, 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 can we, can we come together? We need your attention. Guys. And they got, I looked around the room and I went, 11 males, 11 females. Why are we using the word guys? And who are we talking to when we do that? Try it. Try this. Say the word gals for a day. I mean, gals. Everyone, that is just so hard to do. And my, my learners in the college level, they came to me and they're like, what's this guys thing? This is dumb. Um, it's just this, it's the way we talk. And I challenged them to that. Say the word gals for a day. Gals, just change the word. And they came back to me and said, people yelled at us. <laughs> and I looked at them and said, no shit. <laughs> How are you making every female you speak to feel when you make them less of a person when you're talking to them as a class? And that, that just, I mean, their heads exploded. Because um, they, they never thought about that. They're college freshmen, of course they haven't thought about that. But you have to, you know, just shove it in their face sometimes to make them really think about it. True story. One of the, the juniors walks up to us at the beginning of last year, and there's myself and Megan Beckham, my other co-teacher. I'm standing there kind of recruiting, and she walks up to us and says, Hey guys, how you doing? And I looked at her and said, you realize only 50% of us are guys, right? And she said, <laughs> But that's the point, right? I mean, we, we have to think about who we're addressing. And if we're addressing only half the room, then of course we're not getting full buy-in from everyone in the room. Words matter. And this is my most recent realization that words matter. As teachers, we talk about all of our learners. Our SWAB or yeah, you know, students will okay. be able to, right? So for me on my board, I would always write L W B A T. Learners will be able to. That freaked out some an admin one time. Um, <laughs> students will be able to. Students will be able to factor a quadratic equation with 80% accuracy. Great, great goal. Except, as a teacher, I realize what that does is it says, I can now track it. These 10 students got 50%, or let's say 70%. These 10 students got 100%. I average it out, 80%. Ah, I hit my goal. But I didn't. I only hit the goal with 50% of the people in the room. The other 50% of the people in the room failed. Words matter. Each learner will factor quadratic equations with 80% accuracy. That changes everything. At that point now, I need to really think about how I'm reaching the 50% of the learners that only got 70%. The 100%, I don't care about them. They're golden. Ignore them. Wow, let's, let's really work. How do I have to help Johnny? And how do I have to help Beth? And how do I have to have to help you, and how do I have to help you? And now, instead of thinking about my class, I'm thinking about people and individuals and building that relationship so that I know how to reach them. And that's why I wanted to choose this as my, my favorite, because when you think about what Grace spoke about and the connections and the recognizing the individuality of each person, this is a way, very easy way that, for me, in my mind, I can just change two words. Get rid of guys, because it's dumb. And it's demeaning for 50% of the population. Think about learners as active individuals engaged in the community of learning that's in my classroom, of which I am one of them. So I'm not setting up a power struggle. And think about each, not all. And that's my challenge for myself and the people around me this year is to think about the words, simple words, easy words, 
that changed my thoughts and changed my behavior. And practice it. Don't preach it, just do it. And see the amazing outreach and spread of that. And I know I just preached it, so I'm sorry. But, <laughs> but, that, but if anyone wants to take up that challenge, it's a worthy challenge. And it's an easy challenge to start, but it's a hard challenge to walk. Because you will get pushed back, I promise.